In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a 2D photo look 3D in After Effects. Hey there, my name is Cameron with Motion Science. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take a 2D photo and turn it into a 3D masterpiece. This is a really great technique to use to spice up your portfolio or any social media post. It's really easy to do and doesn't require any third-party plugins. So let's jump in. So here we are in After Effects and the very first step in the process is me pulling in different images that I'm considering doing the parallax effect on and laying those images out to find a good composition. Once I find that composition, I launch Photoshop and I divide that image up into multiple layers, typically the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. I start to cut out my layers, so I'm focused on the dude here uh, to begin with. So I'm using uh, the selection tool and trying to get everything selected as best as possible uh, in a quick manner. Once I have that selected, I will start to uh, erase parts of the image I don't need and then zoom in and really pay attention to the details. Uh, it's all about the details when cutting images out, uh, especially things like in between fingers here, like we're seeing here, I'm zooming in and masking out the parts of the image I don't wanna see. I'm an old school guy, so I like to use the pen tool a lot of times. So here I am using the pen tool to cut out the skateboard. Then I make the same selections again select the background, do some feathering, and do some content aware fill. I'm not gonna go in deep into how you use content aware fill, but you can see here, sometimes it works great, other times it's not so much. Uh, I'm not by any means a pro Photoshop user, I just know enough to get by. And the thing here is that this doesn't have to be a perfect fill in the background. We just have to cover up enough of the edges so that when we're doing the parallax effect, uh, the effect we're trying to pull off works. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll jump back and forth between After Effects and Photoshop to clean up parts of the edge that maybe uh, we're seeing that we shouldn't be seeing and things like that. Here I am uh, just focusing on the foot. I might need to have more information in this foot uh, than what we currently see. So I'm trying to duplicate the foreground foot and bring it into the background foot and see if I can kind of blend them together. I import my Photoshop layer in as a composition, retain layer sizes. What I like to do now is make these layers 3D and position them in 3D space. I like to keep an original in the background so I can keep track of the proportionate scale of the image. Once I've got that set up, I jump back into my main composition and I add a camera. Now, I could add this camera to the pre-comp. It's just the way I like to work, keep things simple with the camera. So I like to have a pre-comp of all the layers inside of it, set up a basic camera move, and then go in and start tweaking some of the moves of the camera. So you can see here, I brought the camera into the pre-comp thinking maybe that'll work better. And I realized that the background still has the guy, the dude in it. So here I am using content aware fill. Uh, to remove that guy. So in this example, content aware fill works a little bit better. Jumping back into After Effects again, working with keyframes, just trying to get that camera move just right, giving a little bit of a push on that camera move, uh, doing a vertical move along with a little bit of a Z move as well. And then I'm starting to adjust the skateboard to make it rotate a little bit to give it a little bit more life. Just give it a little bit of rotation. I like to reverse keyframes a lot of times. So I'll try rotating one way, then reversing that move to see if it works better. It's also better to use less values than more. So for rotation, I'm using very small values. Rotation, again, playing around more with the camera move, just trying to see what works and what doesn't work. And I like to continue to preview things over and over again. A lot of times I like to let the RAM preview just run over and over again as I'm looking at things and seeing what I notice that, that isn't necessarily working. So now I'm trying to add a puppet tool to the dude to see if I can make his foot kind of bend 
uh, do a little bit of movement to it and see how that works. And it looks a little bit funky, a little bit, of, you know, that's the thing with the puppet tool. A lot of times it can get a little bit stretchy and you have to be really careful with it. Less is more, always less is more. So that's kind of cool, but it looks weird because his two feet are moving together the entire time. And in reality, they're gonna move probably a little bit separately. So we're gonna first focus in on covering up the background a little bit, some of those imperfections by adding camera depth of field. I love depth of field, I use it in most of my work. Adding some keyframes for depth of field and it kind of helps to hide things in the background that we painted out. So back in Photoshop, I'm going to attempt to separate the foreground leg from the background leg. And I realize there's a couple errors here, so I'm gonna fill those layers in. And again, this does not have to be perfect, right? I see so many artists focusing on having it just perfect, but we just need to focus on the areas that the camera is gonna see and that's it. So we're gonna do the least amount possible. I'm selecting this area here because we need to content aware fill this area. And again, there'll be a leg in front of this area. So it's not imperative that we get this absolutely correct. So I'm gonna zoom in here, remove some of the areas. Sometimes I'll use the pen tool for this. Sometimes I'll use the brush for this, like you see here. Uh, but just getting rid of some of the excess information that we don't need to see. Then what I'm going to do is import just the leg layers into my pre-comp I have, line them up, make sure that they're scaled, rotated correctly, and lined up with my original image like we see here. And then I'll focus on animating them after I have that. So now that they're lined up correctly, I can rotate that foreground leg just a little differently. It's a little more rotation value than the background and it brings a whole lot of dimension to this image as you can see here. I can also add some puppet tool uh, distortion to the foreground leg and make it bend as well like we see here. And it just adds that little extra detail of movement that really sells this parallax effect. And here I am reversing the keyframes. Again, I like to reverse things just to see if they work better, unreverse them, until I get something that's just feeling nice. Then I'm gonna spend some time just RAM previewing, tweaking keyframes, getting it just right. And I'm gonna add a simple matte choker to the skateboard so that I can tighten up the edges. And then I want to add one more element to the scene, which is a lens flare to kind of bring everything together. So I'm going to start here with the trap code real lens flares. Per usual, with the trap code effects, I can't get the presets to load, so I delete that and move on to the old tried and true optical flares by Video Copilot. Add the flare up here in the left corner and then realize that the light should probably be coming from the opposite direction. So I'm gonna move that over to the right side here. And I'm just gonna have that lens flare just do a really subtle move uh, up and down. That's all it takes just to kind of sell that effect of some light coming into the camera. So I'm also gonna add a little bit of flicker here just to give the light a little bit more movement. The beams are a little too artificial, so I'm gonna add some gauge and blur, blur them out, increase the blur. Doing a final RAM preview here just to check it out. It's looking really dope. And there we go. There is a really awesome skateboarding parallax shot. I hope that you really enjoyed this lesson as much as I loved teaching it. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd love to answer them for you. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to this channel. It helps other people find this channel as well. If you're looking to upgrade your design skill set, master the art of style, and execute like a pro, I have a course called Stylecraft that you can check out at motionscience.tv. You can also learn more about this course by clicking the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Cameron, and this is Motion Science. Motion Science.